Okay, folks, as you've seen in the agenda, we're now going to move into a committee of the whole. And what this is, is coming out of parliamentary procedure and spending some time as committee of the whole. The topic for this sec session is hopes for the next 500 years. I'd suggest that we limit that to hopes for our church. <laughs> hopes for our church, okay? This is the topic. Um, this is an important part, important time in the ELCIC as the new NCC will begin a strategic planning process at its fall meeting. So we're going to do a couple things here in the next half hour or so. We're going to spend 10 minutes in small groups. Um, fellow introverts, this is your chance to be heard. Um, have your discussions at your small table, and then we'll have a chance for some people to come to the microphones to speak. You will be, even though we're suspending parliamentary procedure, you will still be time limited to three minutes, and I will give you a signal. Also because of the need to get on the buses to go tonight, we are going to time limit this session. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes starting now to talk about your hopes for the church for the next 500 years in your small groups. And we do not have time to hear from every table, unfortunately. But if you have ideas that you do not get a chance to express, I would strongly encourage you to write them down and hand them over to me before you leave tomorrow, because we would like to hear from you. But we would just like to hear those who feel that they've got something that's really worthy of sharing. Not to scare you all away, because we, we, you know, we still got time. We've still got time. So um, please, those of you who aren't too shy, come to the microphone and share in three minutes or less some I hopes for the next 500 years. Microphone one. No, microphone two, sorry. Jovi Schmidtke from Saskatchewan Synod. Table 22 had four sort of takeaways that we would call out models, plural, of living into our vocation as Christians, baptismal promises, that people would realize that there is still and always a need for God, not just Christians, but everybody, regardless of religion, denomination, there is always a need for God. That we would stop the idolization of church buildings and that we would eliminate barriers to the gospel. Thank you. Microphone one. Uh, Michael Kurtz, MNO Synod. Um, at our table, we talked about how one of our really great hopes is that um, we would become the priesthood of all believers and that um, all of our people would be engaged in our mission and in our ministry. Uh, we have this wonderful doctrine. Uh, maybe 500 years is long enough for us to get to that place and uh, really hope that, that we can be that and live that. Um, Jackie Nunns and I at our table uh, were on the Faith, Order, and Doctrine Committee of our church and we wrote this great study last year about orders of ministry, which really was about, I think, um, the priesthood of all believers and empowering a ministry of all people. And um, there is one phrase in that book that I hope that we can all just take deep into our hearts, which is, uh, when we are baptized, we are baptized into God's mission. All of us are. When we are baptized, we are baptized into God's mission. Thank you. Microphone two. Jennifer Marler, rostered from BC Synod. Um, one of the th big things that was at our table was that we are, as a church, moving back to the margins where we belong, living out the gospel, speaking with a voice to those who also find themselves on the margins to be a place to serve others. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone one. I'm speaking for uh, table seven. Uh, we express the desire that we have to have a strong community. Meetings like this build community endeavors. We have to accept each other's beliefs and look upward for guidance. We want the Lutheran Church to be a leader for what's coming in the future. We want to affiliate with the other churches, but we have to do it by going back to the basics of what we learned in the ABCs of strategic planning, team building, 
brainstorming. Every idea has importance. Uh, we need less structure. We need more open music. We need uh, less churches with political power, and it's not always healthy and faith-based. We uh, don't always recognize that there is evil in the world, and we need to recognize that that is there. We need to share our mission and build communities, and we need to go outside the walls of the church. Thank, Thank you. you. Microphone one. I'm Jan Hansen. I'm uh, from the Eastern Synod. And I don't speak for anybody but myself. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's that I don't want to tell people what to think. I'd much rather raise questions. And one of the ways that I think is through music. And when I was first thinking about Reformation and the 500 years thing, uh, a friend of mine who's a Mennonite pointed me to a, a Reformation song by the water boys, this is the sea. And the big part of it is, that was the river, this is the sea. And maybe that was true 500 years ago, but it's also true now. We're navigating different waters than we used to. We're not in the river anymore. We can't use the strategies we used when we were in the river. We're in a totally new environment now. And there are a lot of needs out there. And there are a lot of people looking for something from us. And we need to look at what can we do and how can we change ourselves in order to provide what people need, in order to be relevant in our society. And it can be scary to navigate new waters. We don't know how to do it. We need a totally different set of skills, a totally different set of strategies. But it is so exciting. When we were in the river, we were contained within the banks. Now we can go anywhere. We're in the sea. There are so many possibilities and things that we can do. This is an incredibly exciting time to be the church. And I really want to share that excitement with other people and explore to see what we can do. And the last line in that song really brings it forward to me. It just ends with, Behold the sea. Look at all the things we can be doing. Let's do them together. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to share? Microphone two. At uh, our table. Could you tell us who you are? And oh, where sorry, Prina, Prina Gingrich at my, uh, the table I'm at, table 21. Uh, there was some sharing and one of the um, persons at the table was speaking about Doctors Without Borders who basically just they need they know people need help and you know they just that's their mandate to help and it made uh, brought on a line of thinking that I really would and my own thoughts that I'd really like to see um, faith and religion stopped being used in as um, aggression that people are harmed and hurt and abused, both aggression of the overt kind and also passive aggressive stuff. Uh, I'd like people to, over the next 500 years to figure out that faith and religion and deeply held beliefs are not worth killing for. They're worth dying for, however. Thank you. Microphone two. Ed Bastian from the uh, Eastern Senate. I'm not speaking for my table, but I was encouraged by them to come up, so <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I wanted to say that my hopes for the church is that we would start to realize that our kids who don't go to church are better Christians than we are. That, uh, excuse me, I'm getting into, I'm an old man. They, ca they don't care about buildings. They don't care about institutions, but they care about each other, and they care about the earth. And as long as we keep getting it screwed up and getting it the other way, we are never going to draw people into our churches and into our communities. We have to learn, we taught them the right things. We taught them the right things and they get it. We're just uh, feeling the need to hold on to, to the power that we have. And that's what keeps us, that's what keeps our roots so, so 
shallow because we have too, we're too well fed and too well watered and our roots don't grow. The kids have seen that and they understand it. It's my piece, sorry, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Microphone one. Harry House from MNO Synod. And I want to mention something really good that not been mentioned anywhere during the convention. We're very privileged to be a, a LAMP mission station in our place of Flin Flon. And I am, what those missionaries are doing is an example for all of us. They're going into the reserves not to take the Bible and beat people in the head or try and preach the word of God, but to live out what Jesus taught us. They're going into schools and places and say, how can we help you? We are here to be a help, to help you to be the arms and feet as we were instructed. And at first, obviously, they've been greeted with some hostility. Once they mention the word Lutheran at church, suspicions are all up there. But they're getting the trust of these people by living Jesus' words, not preaching the Bible, but living. And I think we can all do that. We, we don't, I don't think we should be always telling people we are Christians, but rather we should be Christians. We should be there, not to say, I'm a Christian, read the Bible, but here, how can I help you? I'm here to help you. What can I do for you? And I think that's the, the lamp. And I'm just so proud of the Lutheran Church. I so I can't speak highly enough that we're doing that. And I, that's something we all can do as Christians, to be Christians rather than preach Christianity. And I think it will really help our denomination. Thank you. Microphone one. I, ju I just wanted to can say... Can you tell us who you are, uh, please? Uh, Eldon Danielson, Sask Synod. Thank you. I just wanted to say that uh, we as, as Lutherans have something that to offer as a gift, the free gift of grace, which is one that we do not work for, but we respond out of love. And that's something that, that we can take with us in our package for a year, two years, five years. And I think that, that somehow we have kind of forgotten about that in, in, in even dealing with our, in, inside our own group. And so if we can just remember that, little line that we use in preaching, that that will get us through a, lo a lot. Thank you. Anyone else speaking? I didn't mean to scare you that much. <laughs> well, I did hear good discussion, and so please do take a minute to write down your thoughts and uh, hand them in to me before you leave. If, if you'd like to do so.